Hello and welcome back to a new video in my D3D12 ES video series. In this video series we learn DirectX 12 in an ad hoc approach. So basically the idea is we're just gonna dive in, not gonna talk about too much of the details and all of the theory behind it. It is a on hands-on uh, video series where we're gonna just be in code and step by step learn how we're gonna uh, write our code. Now in the last video we talked about how we include windows, which headers we need, which libraries we are needed we need and how the uh, com objects on Microsoft uh, work, so the com API from Microsoft and how this is all like interacting together and working with my class com pointer and in today's video we want to take all that knowledge and implement the DirectX 12 debug layer. Now the debug layer on DirectX 12 is a layer that helps you writing your code and fixing problems in your code. Now the debug layer, uh, it's very important, it has nothing to do with uh, if your application is on debug or not. You can have the debug layer even if you are like on a on a release build. The debug layer it is just a additional layer uh, between your code and the DirectX 12 APIs and this layer helps you validating your calls and if something, if one of your call is kind of like invalid it does not directly like just fail the, the function call which then might fail your application. No, that uh, debug layer is basically also going to give you some insights on what went wrong. So it basically uses this output video and it tells you that went wrong, How this is how you fix it. Most of the time at least. But most of the time, even if your application crashes, the debug layer is going to write you a friendly little reminder on what went wrong. So we definitely want to have that in here. All right, so uh, to get started, I want to uh, write this all into its own class. Now, these classes that I'm going to write are very minimal and they are not going to be like really object oriented. They are going to be kind of like static state. However, I want to have the encapsulation in a class. Uh, I just like to have my classes and there are ways of doing it with all classes that I personally think that are not clean. We're going to do it in a very easy and simple way. Now, first of all, all of the debugging stuff is going to go in a folder called debug because this is just a bit of separation here to separate this all uh, from each other. All right, so uh, I'm going to just call this one debug layer.h so that we are in here. So we have the debug layer.h. I'm not going to use namespaces in here. I'm directly going to write a class debug layer. And instead of that class, or maybe maybe we still, maybe we want to prefix this all with DX. This might be something we could do. Let's maybe rename the file and call this DX debug layer. Makes maybe a bit more sense. I personally, yeah, yeah, I think it's okay. Let's also create a matching C++ file so that we are ready to go. Now, what I want to have is I want to have this as a singleton. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the constructor um, a default private constructor. I'm going to delete this constructor, the uh, copy constructor and I am going to delete the copy operator and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to provide an inline uh, static uh, DX debug layer reference get function. The get function shall get the uh, singleton instance and if you want to do a header only singleton without any needs to define it in the C++ file and in the header you can basically just do it like that make an inline static function and then uh, basically provide the instance in here like that and then just return the instance and then you are done you have a very simple but effective uh, singleton provided like that all right now maybe this is even something that you could try to make as a template and use but i don't want to go into uh, into uh, into too much c++ stuff here now what i'm basically going to do is i'm going to write another private uh, public block in here because i want to have this all nicely separated now of course we need all of our uh, standard includes here what did i made wrong here there we go now, of course, I need all my standard includes. There they are. And now I can start writing my code. I am going to have a com pointer here for my debug layer. And this is going to be called D3D12 debug. And we're also going to have a DXGI debug. Of course, they only going to be in here if we are in a debug configuration. If you are not in a debug configuration, it's the classes that we're going to put in the com pointer are not available and thus not usable for us. Now, what are the classes that I'm looking for? I'm looking for the ID 3D12. This is the prefix that we're always going to have for DirectX 12i for interface, D3D12 for the API. 
and then it's just going to be debug. And DirectX 12 has a certain concept of multiple versions of the RP. Most of the time when they started it, the class name was just debug. And every time they added a revision, they incremented the count. So there's a debug 1, there's a debug 2, a debug 3, a debug 4, a debug 5, a debug 6 but no debug 7. So debug 6 is the latest one, and what I would recommend is always use the latest one, right? If you're later on going to change a code, it's not that nice, so always use the latest one that's available. I never had problems with the latest interfaces not being available, but most of the time they are. Now a similar thing goes for DXGI, but it's not D3D12, it's IDXGI, and then also debug, you can already see there's a debug 1, but no debug 2, so we're going to use the IDXGI debug 1. Now, uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to provide one function, one function to initialize the debug layer and one function to shut down the debug layer. And what I want to do is I want to provide a certain pattern that we're going to use throughout the whole video series. I'm going to provide for initialization functions a boolean function, so a bool init, function is going to call init, and a void shutdown. These are the two functions that we're always going to use, init shutdown, shutdown being a void function, in it being a boolean function. Now why is that a boolean function? Because I want to return the value so that we can later on uh, maybe surround this with an assert, but assertions is something that I would need to write as well because they are not provided yet by the API in a way that they are useful because the standard library is not providing it in a useful way. All right, so uh, now we have the two bodies of these functions, and now we just need to add an implementation to all of them. Now, first of all, uh, they're only going to be applying if we are on a debug configuration. If you are not on a debug configuration, these ones do not really care. I don't care. They shall not be executed at all. Maybe we do going to add a return false in here, so that we just have a bit of checkings that in it is always going to return false, and only true in case we are on debug. All right, so uh, now how do we get access to all of these debugging interfaces? Now, the first thing that I want to do is init D3D12 debug layer. Now, how do I initialize the D3D12 debug layer? Well, uh, I need to call a certain function to get these. Normally on, on com, there is a co create instance. This is the normal function that you use to uh, get yourself a com pointer. You provide a class ID and then a bit of gunk around that at some point this nicely friendly IID PVV arcs helper that I've explained in the last video and then the pointer you want to create. However, since DirectX 12 is uh, not a, um, a classical com API, we do not need the co-create instance for DirectX 12. DirectX 12 has actually dedicated functions to retrieve all of these top level interfaces. So for DirectX 12, uh, in this case for the debug layer, we call the function D3D12 get debug interface. This is a function that you need to call and basically this function is going to return an H result and uh, it is going to take a uh, IID and a, a pointer pointer and again this is the IID PPV RX helper and this will go to my D3D12 debug. So this is the interface that we want to get and this is what we want to validate. Now uh, what I want to do is I want to check that if this uh, call succeeds it's returning an H result and to check if an H result was successful we need to use the succeeded macro. So if that call succeeded, then we know that the uh, that the debug interface is valid. And then what we can then do is we can take the debug interface and call a function on the debug interface. Now there are many functions that we can use here. What we want to use is we want to de uh, use the function the enable debug layer to enable the so-called debugging layer, the debugging layer that helps us validate stuff. And as soon as we have it enabled, we have like all the support structure and uh, inserted, and every new call to the DirectX Swift APIs is now going to result result in getting a debug friendly interface and it might even inject debugging stuff into existing interfaces however that's something that I would not bet on. All right so the next thing that we need to do is we need to init uh, DXGI debug. Now DXGI debug is not something that is required 100%. So normally you could get away with just using the D3D12 debug interface. However, there's a certain uh, error in design on the D3D12 debug interface. The design is that uh, tracing for um, leaking uh, com pointers is not really the f it's not really it's not implemented good. 
on um, on D3D12. It's not implemented correctly. Basically, you can't use the D3D12 debug interface and uh, check for leaking um, COM pointers in the DirectX 12 RPs without actually detecting a leak every time. So uh, if you're implementing this correctly, you're gonna at least always see one leak. And this is something that we can avoid by using the DXGI debug. If we're using the DXGI debug, then we can actually detect uh, detect leaks um, in a more stable way. So what we need is we need the DXGI debug layer to um, yeah, basically help us with detecting leaking COM uh, objects. So leaking COM objects is something that we should never have because the class that I've written is managing this basically on its on its own however if you are doing a misdesign on your application you're going to still have some logical leaks that you want to prevent so that's something that we want to do and always check now how do we uh, how do we get a dxgi debug interface now in case of dxgi the function is called dxgi get debug interface now there are two functions i would recommend taking the function with the one because it's the more uh, modern one uh, the, this function takes a flag and then iid and void pointer pointer. Uh, the flags shall be always zero. This is a reserved parameter. And then we again gonna use the iid ppv args with a pointer to our com pointer. And my class is written like that, that it actually works as I already have seen above. Now this is also of course gonna return an h result and this h result is also something that we want to check. So we want to check if that call succeeded and if it succeeded, we have the uh, debug interface. Now, the XGI debug interface has a few features. It can actually uh, leak tr uh, enable leak tracking for thread and stuff like that. Um, I would just recommend just enable it. Uh, it can't hurt enabling something like that. It might hurt performance, but that's on the debug build. Not the thing. The debug build is uh, there to catch uh, problems. So enable leak tracing for threat. This is something that you want to call so that you have all the support structure available. And then there is nothing more that needs to be done. So we can return true and we have all of our debugging support infrastructure available. All right, so uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to now actually implement what we're going to do on shutdown. Now, normally what we want to do in shutdown is we want to roll back our objects. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, release the XGI debug. Now, it's important that it is the normal dot, not the pointer. It's the normal dot that's required. We need to call that release function. And we're going to do the same thing on the D3D12 debug. Now, a visual assistant is always going to make this to a pointer and they need to press backspace so that it converts it back to a dot. Now, this is the trivia thing that we can do. This is basically now destroying them in the same order that we have created it and everything is fine. However, what we have now not done is we have not checked for leaks and that's something that we want to do. We always want to uh, check for, for leaks that might happen and um, we can only do this if the DXGI is actually valid. So I can surround it with an if and it's going to check if the pointer is valid. And if this pointer is valid, what we're going to do is I'm going to call a function called report live objects. Now report live objects is a function that reports all living uh, com objects in the DirectX 12 and DXGI APIs. Now this is uh, exactly what we want to do because this is checking for any leaked com uh, pointers that has no, have not been cleared up correctly to that certain point. Now that function has two arguments. The first argument is a GUID, the so-called uh, uh, API ID. Now the API ID is uh, basically gonna um, tell DXGI what APIs it shall report. So there's a DirectX 12 API, a DXGI API, there's even an, an API GUID for the user application. And you as a user can actually manually insert messages into these uh, these event queues or not even, I, don't, I think message queues they are they called. In these message queues that are actually handling all these, uh, these, these, these debug calls and these debug messages. Uh, however, this is something that we do not want to get into the detail here. So what we want to use is the GUID DXGI debug all. This is a special GUID that's basically going to report for everything. Now the next parameter is a DXGI debug RLO flags. These are flags on how the reporting is done. You can see there are a few things that can be done. You can do reporting for all objects. You can do detailed reporting. You can do a summary reporting and you can do a ignore internal reporting. What we want to do is we want to have this in detail. 
So we want to know exactly what's going on. And additionally, what we want to have is we want to ignore the internal stuff because the internal stuff is something that's not all for interests of us. Uh, we don't care if there are some internal references from DXGI or D3D12 because internal stuff, we can't control it. It's going to go away automatically. Now, um, you can see that this doesn't work. I don't know why. Every uh, other function on D3D12 and DXGI works with combining these two, and this one is also working, but it's not working out of the box. To make this one work, we need to actually manually cast this to this uh, DXGI debug, whatever is the parameter called. DXGI debug RLO flags. Uh, RLO flags, we need to manually cast this, and then everything is fine. No report, live object is in theory returning as an age result. However, the age result does not really have a quality for us. We don't really know what's going on. So, yeah, we can really, like, yeah. Uh, uh, stop and abuse it. Now what I tend to do is I tend to call the output debug string uh, function before I do my uh, reporting. This is just so that we know what's going on. Basically output debug string is also outputting to the console down here or to a remote debugger. So if you are debugging on um, on a remote machine, uh, output debug string is actually sending it to the, the machine that is debugging, not the machine that's running the application. The same goes for report live object. I think this, they are also internally calling output debug string that means if you for example develop for an xbox uh, and you have the xbox connected to your computer the output debug string and report live device object is going to output to your system and not to the xbox but that's something that you're probably not going to do and if you're doing that you're probably not watching my video tutorial so yeah now okay output debug string w uh, output debug string w a function that just prints some text right so the, let's call this CXGI reports um, living device objects. And then we just make a new line here so that everything is nicely ordered and we know what's going on. And if we don't get uh, an output, we at least know that the function has been called correctly and everything is good. All right, so these uh, few lines of code are everything that you need for the debug layer. Now, what you of course need to do is you'll need to uh, include this in here and um, also use it. Now, uh, what I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it inside of my main. I'm not going to use it in any checked way. So what I'm just going to do is debug layer, get init to initialize it, and then somewhere down here, debug layer, uh, get shut down to shut it all down. I'm not going to check the return value since this is uh, supposed to return false on release and returning false on the debug layer and it doesn't really have a consequence. And yeah, that's basically the idea. Now, if I run my application here, you can see that uh, we actually get our output. The XGI reports li uh, living device objects and we do not get any output. Uh, so everything actually worked fine. And you can actually even see that the debug layer worked by inspecting the data that we have in here inside of the uh, output window. You can see that it now loaded uh, D3D12 core. It loaded the XGI debug uh, .dll and D3D12 SDK layers .dll. So since we have initialized the debug interfaces these uh, DLLs has have been loaded if I would try this out and release you're going to see that these one are not loaded only the D3 D12 core no I don't think that the D3 D12 core is even loaded at all because we're not doing any other direct 12 calls other than the debug layer so direct X would probably not be loaded at all yeah so there you go on release we do not have a load at all because it basically factored out the debug layer since this is only a debug only uh, thing all right, so this gives us all the insights. Maybe what I want to do is I want to quickly run that and show you that's actually working. So if I say DX debug layer, I don't think that I actually have access to the debug layer because <laughs> it's not living in there. Um, however, if I would make a breakpoint maybe here, you're going to see that everything works, that I hit the breakpoint. And if I go to my locals and take a look at this, you can see that we actually have uh, valid pointers in here. And that's the whole point. If we have valid pointers, it means that the APIs have returned us uh, a correct value. All right. So that's everything that I wanted to do in today's video. In today's video, we just talked about the debug layer. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve our GPU, uh, create ourselves a common queue on the GPU and a fence for synchronization with the common queue. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye.